As you guys can see, we are emulating God of War Ghost of Sparta on our iPhone using the RetroArch emulator. Yo, what's up guys, it's Aptrix here. Today, I'll be showing you guys the easiest guide to set up RetroArch emulator on your iOS devices. RetroArch is an all-in-one retro game emulator for your iOS devices which has just released on App Store. Now, if you guys don't already know, lot of emulators have now been authorized to be launched on App Store officially and that's where RetroArch comes in. Basically, you can use this front-end emulator to run console games like PSP, Nintendo DS, PS1, N64 and lot more. I'll be showing all of it to you guys in today's video including how to add games, the best settings and much more. But before getting started, if you guys are new here then hit that like button, subscribe, turn on all notification as I'll keep you guys with the latest emulators for iOS devices. With that being said, let's scroll down and check out the minimum requirements. Compatibility, it will work on iOS devices with iOS 14.2 or later. So unfortunately, this emulator won't run on your old iPhones like iPhone 7 or 8. You need to have at least iOS version 14.2 or later. Once this app has been added in your iPhone, just go ahead and tap on the open button. And there we go, at the bottom you will see some assets being loaded. Once that has been done, all the icons will be properly loaded. Now one thing which you'll notice is the fact that it gets Android style of UI. So this is just the RetroArch Android version port for iOS devices. I don't think they will work on a special UI for iOS devices. Nonetheless, right here RetroArch has successfully started. Now the easiest way to start playing games in RetroArch is just go to load content option and afterwards tap the open button and select the game that you want to play. For example, I can tap on this God of War PSP game that I have loaded on my iPhone and it will directly start on RetroArch. But before going through the gameplay process, let me show you guys some of the settings in RetroArch. So you can go to load core section where you will be able to load lot of consoles directly in the RetroArch emulator. This is important if you want to emulate games of these specific consoles. For example, if you want to emulate Nintendo DS games, you can go with Melon DS Core or DS Emu Core. I'll go with Melon DS. I'll tap on it. Afterwards, tap on Start Core and it will automatically load the contents of Melon DS emulator. And that's how you can load cores of your favorite consoles. You can also go to configuration file where you will be able to load configuration, save or reset to default. Now, uh, the configurations can be accessed through by tapping on the settings option where you will be able to see lot of options such as user interface, video, audio, input, latency, frame throttle, drivers and much more. Now first of all let's go to frame throttle and make sure to enable fast forward frame skip. This will make sure that you will be able to fast forward your games while emulating them. Once that has been done we can go to video option. In terms of video driver make sure that you are using Vulkan as it is best for giving amazing performance. You can also enable threaded video to improve performance at the cost of latency. You can use this only if you have an low end iPhone. And make sure to set the vertical refresh rate. You can set the vertical refresh rate to 120Hz if your device supports it. Anyways, let's just go ahead and head back. In terms of scaling, make sure to set the aspect ratio as full screen so you get a better gameplay experience. We can use video filters, we can also change HDR settings but we won't be doing that as it is unnecessary. You can customize it on your own. Now you can head on over to the input section but I don't really recommend you guys to change the control options unless you are using an external controller because the default input controls of RetroArch are pretty amazing. You can also change drivers etc but I don't really recommend you guys to do that by default you are good to go once that has been done just go ahead and tap on the load content option you can also create a directory in which you can store your favorite console games but i have not really stored anything in the retro arc folder as you can see at the top we can also access file browser from the files app too which we'll be doing with the god of war ghost of sparta game so i'll just go ahead and tap on it afterwards we'll get some cores as god of war ghost of sparta is an psp game we'll go with ppss pp core after you tap on it, you will be able to see that our game is about to start. Now one thing that I recommend you guys is to configure the core settings. As we are using PPSS PP, we will need to set the best settings which are appropriate for it. For example, go to core options, afterwards go to video, make sure to set the resolution to 1920 by 1088p, afterwards you can enable auto frame skip option. Scroll down, make sure to enable vertex catch as well as lazy texture catching. Make sure to set this spline for PSP emulation, but PPSS PP emulator has also been released officially for iPhone. Once that has been done, set the anistotopic filtering to 2x and now we should be all set to getting some amazing performance while emulating a PSP game on RetroArch. To head back, just go ahead and tap on this option. 
and enable the fast forward mode and there we go guys our game is about to begin as you guys can see we are emulating god of war ghost of sparta on our iphone using the retro arc emulator now the controls as you can see it is x y a b which means unfortunately we don't get playstation controls so you'll need to make note of that Nonetheless, you will be able to see the fast forward option works flawlessly. I can fast forward any cutscene as well as the gameplay speed percentage as well. So once your game starts, you can stop fast forwarding it if you want to play it properly or you can even tap on the circle option to make sure to enable joystick controls. So you'll be able to see that the game is running without any issues. And yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. If you want me to make more videos on emulators for iOS devices, then let's say 200 likes on today's video. I'll see you guys next time though. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.